I'm Dr. Thomas Malloy, Medical Director for Cardiac Surgery, Northwest Regional Heart and Vascular at Venice Medical Center in Portland, Oregon. I specialize in adult and cardiac surgery with a subspecialty interest in minimally invasive and robotic cardiac surgery. Our team performs a high volume of these procedures with outstanding outcomes. The most common pathology we are asked to intervene on is aortic stenosis. The valve on the left is a normal trileaflet valve. The valve on the right, a calcified and degenerated stenotic valve. Patients with aortic stenosis generally remain asymptomatic for many years. Once symptoms of chest pain, shortness of breath, or syncope develop, mortality usually occurs within three years. Valve replacement should be accomplished as soon as possible after symptoms develop or in the case of rapidly progressive aortic stenosis even in the absence of symptoms. On the left we see a normally functioning valve, on the right a leaking or insufficient valve. This is called aortic insufficiency. It is a less common indication for surgery though quite frequent in our center and is often repairable rather than requiring replacement. Treatment of symptomatic aortic stenosis requires replacement of the valve either surgically or percutaneously. For patients at high risk for surgical aortic valve replacement, we may recommend transcatheter valve replacement or TAVR as illustrated in this series of slides. This has the advantage of requiring only a small groin incision. However, the calcified leaflets and annulus are not removed, limiting the size of the implanted valve. This technique may be particularly advantageous in high-risk patients who require redo aortic valve replacement, as depicted in this video. Both the Medtronic core valve and Edward Sapien valve are commercially available valves for transcatheter replacement. Compared with surgical valve replacement, however, durability of TAVR valves is less proven. The size of the device can be compromised by the calcified tissue not removed, leaving residual gradients, and the risk of requiring a permanent pacemaker post-procedure is greater compared with surgical valve replacement. Implantation of an optimal valve requires cardiopulmonary bypass and surgical removal of the calcified valve and implantation of a tissue or mechanical valve. Fortunately, minimally invasive surgical options have now been developed and over the last 15 years I have performed hundreds of these operations with excellent results. This slide shows the mini sternotomy approach used for aortic valve replacement. A transverse aortotomy is made, the valve is excised, and then sutures are placed around the annulus of the native valve. The sutures are then passed through the sewing ring of the valve, which is subsequently lowered to the annulus, and the sutures then tied or secured with a tie knot crimping device. Before surgery, specialized x-ray procedures are performed to determine the exact location for the mini incision. With this approach, the optimal prosthesis, whether it be bioprosthetic or mechanical, can be utilized to minimize the risk of future intervention. Recovery from the mini incision is much more rapid than standard technique. Through a minimally invasive incision, mechanical, bioprosthetic, uh, stentless, or sutureless valves can all be implanted depending on the individual needs of the patient. More extensive aortic root procedures can also be accomplished in some cases with less invasive approaches. At Adventist Medical Center, we track all of our open heart surgeries through the Society of Thoracic Surgeons database. 95% of all cardiac surgeries performed in the United States are tracked utilizing this extensive database. It is widely regarded as the best quality tool to evaluate surgical programs. All patients undergoing open heart surgery require a period of assisted ventilation through a breathing tube. At Adventist Medical Center, many patients have the breathing tube removed prior to leaving the operating room. 
Those still ventilated post-op are breathing on their own far sooner than other programs as you can see from this slide. Our mean intubation time post-operatively for those leaving the operating room intubated is 3.9 hours versus 13 to 14 hours in other hospitals. Intra- and post-operative blood usage is also significantly less than national averages due to the use of minimally invasive techniques and careful blood conservation measures. Here you can see that less than 6% of our patients receive blood transfusions perioperatively <clears throat> versus over 40% in other programs. Minimally invasive aortic valve replacement patients also require less intensive care unit level care compared to other programs. Approximately one day in our program versus two to three days in other programs. Due to rapid recovery after minimally invasive aortic valve replacement, patients recover rapidly and are discharged earlier, approximately four days at our hospital versus an average of seven days in other hospitals. In spite of a short length of stay, readmission rates remain very low at Adventist Hospital, typically 0% versus 9% in other programs. Complication rates are low, as you can see from a stroke rate of 0%, renal failure rate 0%, and a mortality rate 0%. In our center, as a result of the extensive use of minimally invasive techniques, our hospital's universal bed cardiovascular unit, very a few blood transfusions, multidisciplinary teamwork, frequent post-operative follow-up in our clinic, and the use of the STS database to continually reassess quality.